Studio by the Liberal Party's Fiona Scott. She's the MP for Lindsay in Sydney's West. And from southeastern Sydney and the seat of Kingsford Smith is Labor MP Matt Thistlethwaite. Welcome to both of you. Hello. Do you think Glenn Stevens was right when he said that some of what's going on in the housing market is crazy? Fiona first. Look, I think the housing market is definitely very hot. Um, speaking to real estates out in Western Sydney, where I'm from, it, the demand is, is huge. I mean, I have seven property developments going on in my electorate right now. There's several that are ticking between the New South Wales Department of Planning and, and the local councils. And the demand is just there. Have and you seen it before at this sort of level? Um, look, I don't necessarily think so. It is very hot at the moment and the demand for new houses and new and different styles of, of housing choices. I mean, one of the trends, and I'm not sure if it's the same for you, Matt, um, in your electorate, but I know what we're seeing is people not necessarily wanting the acreage blocks and in Western Sydney where I'm from, uh, we have uh, big suburbs that have nice five acre properties and one acre properties and things like that. People looking for more the, the apartment style accommodation close to public transport so they can get in and out of the city to their jobs. What's going on where you are Matt? The market's certainly very hot and not a week goes by where uh, I don't get a comment from a constituent about concern about housing affordability. In particular parents worried that their kids won't be able to afford to live in the same community that they've, they've grown up in. And if you look at the objective results, 15% growth in house prices in Sydney, and compare that to, to wages growth of about 2.5% uh, inflation at 1.5%, there's definitely an issue in that market. And when the, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, when the um, Treasury Secretary say that uh, we've got an overheated market, the government should listen to that. Do you think it's in the top, say, three issues for voters? I would say so, yes. Uh, certainly when you're out and about in the community, people are constantly raising the issue of housing demand, uh, the prices and where people, their kids in particular, are going to be able to live. Did Joe Hockey have it right in telling first home buyers to get a good job that pays well, Fiona? Look, I think when we look at housing prices, it is a challenge for, for people to get into their first home. Um, I think that's one of the big issues that we do see, but it, it is also a matter of people being able to have the options of housing and, and move to suburbs where things are more affordable. Uh, for instance, there's you, you can buy a brand new house in the Thornton Estate, a brand new apartment off the plan, $340,000. That's still a lot of money and that's still hard for, for, for a young, young family. So and given that, how would Joe Hockey's advice have played in your electorate? Well, look, I, I think um, the Treasurer was trying to express that it is, is challenge and then the market is quite hot. Um, but, you know, there are various options for housing right across Sydney and um, finding other solutions for housing and different styles of housing is what I think people need to look at. How did that advice play in your electorate, Matt? I thought the Treasurer's comments were insulting and demonstrated how out of touch he is. If you're a, a nurse, a childcare worker, a teacher, you can't just walk into the boss and say, I, I want more money. Um, a lot of people do these jobs because they're passionate about it. Um, they like the work that they do, they still should be able to work in those industries and be able to afford to live in Sydney. And that's the issue when, uh, when the Treasurer and the Prime Minister are saying that there isn't an issue, but they're getting advice that there is, they should take note. Fiona, write a reply. Well, look, I think as the property market grows and you look at some of the inner city suburbs where you've had the older style blocks with bigger housing on it, uh, so with bigger yards, then that housing is becoming more expensive as they are being subdivided into smaller houses. Now, there is housing available in outer western Sydney suburbs like Lindsay and, and also in, in areas like Chifley, as some of the mapping has shown today, that um, People do need to look around, they need to see what is available uh, and find something that suits their budget. What, did it, what incentive is there, you know, if you're a teacher or a police officer or a childcare wor worker, what incentive is there for them to say live in your area or your area when for the same money you can go and live in Brisbane and get yourself a beautiful four bedroom house, do the same job and, and it's a nicer lifestyle? Look, I think that's certainly a challenge for Sydney and I think um, in my electorate of Lindsay, I mean, two thirds of the workforce have to commute every single day. So housing affordability, people choose to, to live somewhere like Penrith because they have the accessibility and close proximity to good quality schools, be it public schools, independent schools or Catholic schools. The, the ability to 
have one income so that they can have um, some uh, maternity leave to be home with children and to manage those different options. So I think when people make lifestyle choices uh, in regard to um, what they are able to afford on their budgets, how they raise their children, um, that's, a, that's a, a matter for each individual family. I think the governments need to support how families ca can best make those choices. Is there a risk, do you think, Matt, that, um, say, in an area like yours, that you're going to end up over the years not able to attract teachers and, and police officers and nurses and jobs like that because, as I point out, it is cheaper and you can have a better lifestyle to live elsewhere? That's why governments need to take this issue seriously. You need those people in those occupations to deliver services, to ensure that cities work. So. Uh, we need childcare workers to, to look after our kids when people go off to work. We need teachers to, to educate those kids. If, if those occupations, people are saying that they're under stress, and you've got the Treasurer saying, well, just go and get another job, you'll be fine, uh, we've got a serious issue. And that's why the government needs to take this issue seriously. Getting rid of the advisory council that was advising the government on housing affordability and supply isn't a good step, but that's what the Abbott government's done. Do you see any, from what the sort of feedback people give you, any sort of obvious solution or something that could be done right away that would relieve some of the stress? Look, it, there's certainly an issue with supply, um, and Labor said that we've got an open mind at, to how we look at uh, reform in that area. We've got a discussion paper that's out at the moment. Um, submissions on that have closed, and Chris Bowen and Jan McLucas are going to work seriously on that policy. But we've also said we're willing to have a look at some of the demand side issues. So the taxation regime and how that affects demand is something that the government should have an open mind to, but unfortunately they've, they've appeared to close that off. Look, I agree it is a matter of supply. And um, we've all got to remember in Sydney, it was Bob Carr that said Sydney is full. A lack of infrastructure investment right across our city has really led to the fact that we haven't had the supply that has driven up the prices. Um, even out in Western Sydney now, as I said, seven property developments going on and one of the issues is allowing or having the infrastructure to provide access to some of the, these, these blocks so that they can release more land. Um, the also uh, different bits. So for instance the West Connex project. Now that project will allow massive urban renewal right through the inner west. That will also mean that we can build more apartment style accommodation providing more housing options. These things will provide more affordable housing for people to live closer to the city and be able to work closer to the city. So I think it's looking at... Only, it only if people I guess are happy to live in apartments. So sorry to cut you off we are yep. out of time unfortunately. But Fiona Scott, Matt Thistlethwaite, thank you very much for Thanks, today. Thank you.